Hey there, this is Matt once again, and welcome back to another review of another 80s horror film. This time it is The the Teep. Sorry, I stutter there, but this is like the second time I've had to do this. But, just my video screwed up. But The Teep is a film I was not sure on doing, but someone on Facebook mentioned, hey, how about re-reviewing this one? And sadly, the film's not on DVD or Blu-ray. So I had to go find it on Daily Motion. Now the film is directed by Michael Mann, who I do enjoy as a director. I like Manhunter, The uh, Heat with Al Pacino, uh, Collateral, all films I've reviewed, all films I enjoy. But I also, there are films of his I don't like. Black Hat was very boring. Miami Vice the movie, I thought was a terrible version of the TV show. And Public Enemies I thought was pretty boring as well. So. But this one, considering those have a release, of course, the newer films, but this one doesn't, it's ridiculous. And I don't know the reasons. I've heard all different things. Like Michael Mann is mad. Just, he didn't want some version on it. Then put the version you do want on it. Or, you know what, get over it. I've heard, I mean, it's better than Black Cat or some of these other newer films you've done. I've heard it's Tangerine Dream's music, but that doesn't make sense because a lot of other films with Tangerine Dream music have a release. I've heard that it's, was it that, uh, it's probably Paramount, Pear Pricks, because to me they're the worst company ever for releasing movies. I mean, The Golden Child doesn't have a Blu-ray, Another 48 Hours, another Eddie Murphy films don't have a Blu-ray. The list goes on. Stream Factory has had to take stuff from them. April Fool's Day from 1986 doesn't have a Blu-ray. The, the list, like I said, goes on. And this is one another of them. Now, the story is fairly simple. You have these Germans, these Nazis. They go to this place. That's the stone foundation in a village. And it's called the Teep. Some soldiers get greedy because they see these crosses made of silver. They open it and they open up a door. And this evil force is let loose and is killing the men. So they enlist the help of this professor in a wheelchair played by Ian McKellen and his daughter to look at these writings on the wall and discover what's going on. All the meanwhile, this mysterious stranger played by Scott Glenn, he's coming to the keep. And of course, you find out his intentions. And first and foremost, like I said, I think I like this even more than when I first saw it. What keeps the film going is, even though I saw on VHS quality and daily motion, you can tell that this is a good looking film, like most Michael Mann films are. The, the lighting, the aesthetic, the atmosphere, the ambiance, the, the look of the teep. Certain bits of lighting are in slow motion, like when the soldier is drawn to this cross and you see the light and him going to in slow motion. Or there's a shot when the two men open the teep, the, the door on there. And the guy's crawling in this tunnel and he has a light. And you see the camera pull back on one shot to the point that him with the light is just a dot. And it's revealed like these pillars and columns and then this light comes in and it doesn't cut. You see the light and like go all the way up getting tighter and tighter and meet that tiny speck up here where that German soldier was stuff like that it's like A I wish I could see this in HD Blu-ray crystal clear and B shots like that are pretty damn cool to watch very well done and this has a great cast I mean Scott Glenn from The Challenge which is a film I enjoy uh, Bat Draft Ian McKellen from the Lord of the Rings films as well as the uh, what you call the the first couple X Men movies, Gabriel Byrne, who I always remember as the villain, the devil, and End of Days, a very underrated Schwarzenegger movie. You also have Jurgen Prot now, who is the villain, Beverly Hills Cop 2. Like I said, you have a pretty cool cast. I mean, like I said, Scott Glenn is the stranger type who also a bit of a supernatural quality to him. 
Ian McKellen is this diseased guy in a wheelchair who gets healed by this demon. Gabriel Byrne is the more sadistic Nazi leader, while Jürgen Prat now is a little bit more of a compassionate German, which had a little interesting dynamic to that. And there's some cool special effects. I like the look of the demon Molossar, whether you first see it where it's all wrapped up in dust and smoke and you just see its eyes, or later on when you see the full body. And I thought it was a cool looking, granted the head is a little bit herky-jerky with the animatronics, but I like the design, I like the look, I like the red eyes and the red mouth, like the red that's inside the mouth, and it actually talks. I don't know who does the voice, but it's a really good voice for the character. Uh, and in a weird way, for a little bit, it makes you kind of root for this character because, which that's the point. I mean, if the devil or ever is supposed to tempt you, it's in a way you're supposed to like his cause, which makes the villain smart. Because Ian McKellen is this Jewish professor with his daughter. They're brought in from a concentration camp and... To decipher these readings and the creature the molossar saves the girl from being raped and then heals Ian McKellen's character which is a smart thing for this thing to do because it wants their help so you know at nice and I can get what I want so again it's kind of a smart decision on the villain and you didn't understand Ian McKellen's point of view because this thing's killing Nazis. And it's like, well, what's bad about that? <laughs> you know, if Indiana Jones can do it, he can do it. You know, killing Nazis. Fuck up Nazis. So you as the viewer is kind of like, well, you know, this Molossar ain't too bad of a cat either. He ain't too bad of a dude either. But again, you know, that's the point. And it even bellows like, they're killing my people? Who are these people? Who are these? And all oh, they're the Gestapo and their leaders in Berlin and... You, you just, the way it acts and the way it deceives, it makes sense logically why it would do that to get what it wants, which is for this thing to be away from so he can be fully set, through, set free. And then you have the final confrontation with Scott Glenn and this uh, Molossar, which seemed a bit too short, not quite anticlimactic, but close, but... I, mean, I do enjoy the film, like I said, for the ambiance, the cast, the music by Tangerine Dream is good. The The issue is you could tell a lot of stuff was cut out, and that's because originally this was a three, like an over three hour movie, and it was cut down to like an hour and 30 some minutes. And not by Michael Mann's choosing, but they said we need a film under, we need a two hour film. Nope, instead we need like an hour and 30 some minute film. So you can tell a lot of stuff was cut out. For example, there's a love story between Scott Glenn and the professor's daughter that seems almost out of nowhere. That's because a lot of the buildup was cut out. So that's why I was like, wait a minute, they're, all, they're having sex already and she cares for him, but she's barely known him, huh? Well, again, all that stuff was cut out. So moments like that, I have a feeling there was a bit more of Scott Glenn's character in that original cut. Maybe a bit more meat to the character. Uh, would have been nice to see some of the soldiers. Because they keep talking about how these German soldiers keep getting killed. You only see a handful. Which is cool. I mean when the two soldiers opened in to begin with. The one guy's body's pulled back and half his body's gone. Or at times the, the Molossar will suck the light. I guess the soul out of their eyes. And like one guy's head's... Are, his head explodes and the other like his body blows back it would have been nice to see more of that uh, a couple more of those kind of crazy cool death scenes so yeah a couple more of those would have been nice a bit more of a longer battle between Scott Glenn and Molossau would have been nice and to see all the the cut footage because even the very end it's like I know something's missing here and that's because, spoiler alert folks, spoilers, the theatrical cut ends thinking that Scott Glenn's character is dead, but on YouTube, from I guess the TV version, 
there's the extended ending where it's a much happier ending where the girl turns back and then finds Scott Glenn, takes him with her and her dad, and they go somewhere on a boat. And I have no idea why the hell that was cut out. Again, I don't think it was Michael Mann's choice. Maybe that's why Michael Mann's so upset about it. But it's like then, f instead of doing these piece of shit black hat, you know, public enemy movies, actually go back and find your fucking version. And do something, man. I am surprised there's no fan cut of this. I am surprised there's no fan cut of this movie. Where they put like the an HD version if it's out there. And then like put in like scenes of the TV cut. If there is, please let me know it because I love to watch it. I don't think we'll ever see the over three hour version because it's very, 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 very rare for that to happen. I mean, there are exceptions. My Bloody Valentine from 1981, but that's, again, a very rare occurrence. I, I did maybe because Paramount Pear Pricks, no reason to call them Pear Pricks. I mean, they wouldn't release body parts of Jeff Fahey, so Stream Factory had to fucking buy it from them. Hopefully they do April Fool's Day, since they're doing Paramount titles. Hell, do the keep. Say, fuck you, Michael Mann, you don't own this. <clears throat> hey, what do I know? Uh, one thing about this movie I always have to mention... Anytime I think about it, I think of my friend Mike OCB Communications. Because I know at one point there's this documentary being made on it, which that was years ago, and I don't know what the hell happened to it. So maybe the guy failed. <laughs> oh, okay. It was this guy named Stefan Peter, who I call Peter Pecker, the purple people eater. And the reason I do that is because a uh, long, long ago, on a YouTube far away, my friend Mike OCP. He had another channel. I think it was OCP003 this happened. Could be wrong. And he did like a review and then he did like a tribute and he used pictures. Now, pictures were on the internet. Okay, cool. Then this guy, Stefan Peters, like, you cannot use this. Cease and desist. This is from my website. And Mike's like, I didn't take it from your website. This is stuff on the internet that anyone can do view for free. Just because you own a website doesn't mean you own this stuff. Fair use. And you don't even own it. You didn't make the film. You didn't direct the film. You didn't write the film. This isn't yours. It's not like I can buy a piece of theme from the 1990 Ninja Turtles and then I go, oh, I own that movie. Or I buy a piece of theme from Hard Target and, uh, oh, I own the movie now. That's ridiculous. But Stefan Peter, this guy, went after my friend Mike and got his channel shut down. So go figure. We actually tell that story. If I remember, I'm going to put it down in the link below. It's called The Teep Story. And Mike tells the story of what happened. It's a pretty fun story. I mean, it's it's fun now that, you know, Mike's doing well. But still, it's like, that's why he's called Stefan Peter the Pecker, you know. You know, God, he's such a donkey dick. Stop, you know, stop petering the donkey dick. But, uh. You know, good luck in your documentary that's never been released. Even if it somehow magically does, it doesn't excuse his shitty behavior. By the way, the keep, I enjoy it. Again, I enjoy the atmosphere, the light, and the ambiance. I like the cast. Uh, the story may be thin, but I kind of don't mind the premise of it, the idea of it, uh, the visuals. I like the look of Molossar. I like the design of that creature. I like the Tangerine Dream music. I wish we could see this in HD Blu-ray. I wish we could see the full uncut version. Don't hold your breath on that. But I did the keep. I I think it's a pretty pretty damn decent flick. And uh, like I said, I probably enjoyed it more watching it again than I did back then in the day. But uh, yeah, the keep pretty good if you want to see it. Again, there's no DVD or Blu-ray, so you don't have to find it on Daily Motion. I don't know if anyone uploaded it on YouTube. But it's on Daily Motion in two parts. You know, what can you do? Whoever's the reason for holding this bad, just release the damn thing. That's just my opinion. But thanks for watching. Take care. We will see you in the next video. Later.